serotonin syndrome. And very briefly, I wanted to first describe how the medications that cause serotonin actually work. Otherwise, it'll be difficult to understand. So let's start off with SSRIs. And these, of course, stand for serotonin selective reuptake inhibitors. And the way they work is if you have a synapse, the synapse, of course, is this area here. And then this is the presynaptic terminal, and this is the postsynaptic terminal. Normally what happens is these serotonin molecules come out and they go to the next uh, nerve. And serotonin is represented by 5-HT as being its abbreviation. Now, some of the serotonin comes back and gets reabsorbed into the presynaptic area. What SSRIs do is they essentially block that. So essentially SSRIs block the reabsorption of serotonin. So if the reabsorption is blocked, that means more serotonin is available in the synapse and more serotonin can go to the next nerve. The next type of medication that's involved in serotonin syndrome are MAOI. And this stands for monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Monoamine oxidase is essentially an enzyme that helps break down serotonin. And what MAOIs do, as you can probably deduce from the name, is they inhibit that. So they inhibit this from happening. So if that's not happening, then you have more of the serotonin available. So that's really just the basics. MAOIs prevent the breakdown of serotonin, and therefore they increase the amount and the availability of serotonin. Now I wanted to list uh, some of the names of the medication so you can recognize these on clinical vignettes. SSRIs are very popular and very widely prescribed and some of them are as follows. There's fluoxetine, there's sertraline, paroxetine, fluvoxamine, and citalopram. MAOIs, there's two I'll mention. There's tranylcypramine and phenylzine. So what is a clinical scenario here? Basically what happens is a typical scenario is someone's on SSRIs and they're also on an MA OI inhibitor. And because both of those increase serotonin, you get serotonin syndrome, which is essentially an excess of serotonin. So some of the symptomatology includes mental status changes, such as anxiety, agitation, and a feeling of restlessness. Then you have autonomic symptoms, and in particular, autonomic hyperactivity. And those symptoms include increased heart rate, tachycardia, increased blood pressure, hypertension, fever or hyperthermia, sweating, diaphoresis, and shivering. And you can also have with serotonin syndrome neuromuscular hyperactivity. And the symptoms of that include tremor, and muscle rigidity. The diagnosis essentially is based on history and symptoms. Um, you can do other tests, but really it's not necessary if you're pretty sure about uh, what's happened. And in terms of the treatment, the very first thing, of course, is stop all the serotonin medications that the patient is on. Next thing, it's really supportive in terms of the symptomatology, for example, if they have excess anxiety, you can calm them down with the benzodiazepine. If they have a fever, of course, you treat the fever. If they have high blood pressure, you treat that. So it's really symptomatic treatment. Sometimes, of course, um, you do have the option of giving a medication called cyproheptidine. And the reason that is given is because this medication is essentially a serotonin antagonist. So it can be given to help the symptomatology. 
So now let's take a look at a couple of vignettes. 25-year-old female has been treated with fluoxetine for depression, monthly hydrochlorothiazide for one week before her menses for premenstrual syndrome, and omeprazole for GERD. On the third day of her monthly fluoxetine, she began to complain of muscle spasms around the neck and shoulders. She then grabbed a friend's tramadol for her wry neck. Within two hours of her first dose of tramadol, her muscle spasms became worse and she began to complain of chills, goosebumps, and mental agitation. In the nearby emergency department, she manifests hyperreflexia, which of the following is most likely cause of symptoms and signs. In addition to SSRIs, which is what fluoxetine is, NMAOIs, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, there are a few other medications that, if put into the mix, can cause serotonin syndrome. And one of them is tramadol. And that's essentially what's happened. So the best way to describe this is essentially she's had an interaction with these two medications. So the answer to this is C. And the last one. Symptoms of acute overdose of this medication include diarrhea, myoclonus, diaphoresis, elevated temperature, facial flushing, and tremor. Depending on the dose ingested, the patient may become agitated, confused, hypertensive. Hyperreflexia can occur and progress to seizures. These symptoms may occur at conventional doses if the patient is also using monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Well, the medication class that they're describing is SSRIs. And of the answer choices listed, the SSRI here is E, sertraline.